and now we're going to have a look at how we record and monitor butterfly populations. Populations. And we do this because understanding changes in butterfly populations is the key to conserving them. For example, some people might say you don't see as many pearl border fritillaries around here anymore, but we like to have the data behind that. And then if you look at the maps of pearl border fritillaries, we can see what's happened to them. If you look at the blue circles, you'll see that some of the records go back to the early 1970s, and you'll see that those blue circles show sites where pearl border fritillaries are no longer found. So we can see that they're disappearing from large parts of the country. But then when we look at the graphs, we can also see that their distribution and abundance trends since the 1970s are generally going downwards. So this data will show us that the pearl border fritillaries are in dire need of conservation work. And it helps us to know which species we should be concerned about, as well as those we might be less concerned about. And species such as the ringlet are increasing. So whenever we're doing our conservation work, we might not focus upon species like that so much. And we can also then look at the effects of climate change and try to predict how future climate change will affect different species of butterfly. Then we look at the UK State of Butterflies 2015 report. It used records from over two and a half thousand weekly transects, as well as 800 wider countryside butterfly survey locations, plus 11 million other records. So reports like this require an enormous amount of data, and this is mostly collected by volunteers. So I've already mentioned how understanding butterfly populations can inform our conservation work, and we can look at how they are really good indicators of climate change and other land use changes because they respond really quickly to those changes. Generally, then, we can call it taking nature's pulse. So we can combine these records of butterflies with records of bees or bats or birds and wildflowers, and we can see how nature in the UK is doing. And it's good for us as well, so it's excellent for our mental and physical health to get outside on a sunny day to record butterflies. And this is essentially a biological record, and the biological record at its, at its basis requires three main things. Those are the date, the approximate or the exact location, and the name of the species. And I'll first of all deal with casual records. This is when you might see a butterfly when you're out and about, and then you send your sighting to us. One of the best ways to send in casual records is through a, a website called iRecord. iRecord is an online system for collecting biologic records of many kinds, and it allows citizen scientists as well as professional ecologists to actually send in their sightings to a central place where they can be checked by the experts and then included in our databases and used in mapping. You can also use it for things such as bees, dragonflies, beetles, including ladybirds, grasshoppers, and many more. So if you want to access iRecord, you can just go to the website, which is on the screen there. You need to create an account, um, or you can log in if, if you already have an account, and that will then allow you to submit records to the iRecord website, as well as use the special iRecord Butterflies app. So having a look at the app then, so this app is completely free to download. You can use it on Apple or Android devices. You can use it on a phone or on a tablet. And to find it, all you have to do is search in your store for iRecord Butterflies and to download it. It's extremely useful for records on the go because it can actually find you using GPS or you can submit records whenever you get home. If you find a species, you can go back onto the map and you can zoom into that location and enter your record for there. You can submit single records of a single species. You can submit multiple records, which is where you're seeing more than one species, but there's also a free ID guide with it. So it has all of the UK butterfly species with many photos, maps and flight times. So it's extremely useful for that as well. So after you submit a record to iRecord, then your record will go online to be verified by a local butterfly recorder. If you reckon that the species you've seen might be a rare one or an unusual one, do try to get a photograph of it because the verifier might then ask for a photo. So you can use that to back up your record. Now for the rest of this talk, I'll be looking at some of our monitoring schemes. And the one that I'll be focusing upon is called the UK Butterfly Monitoring Scheme, the UK BMS. So this does give us the best information on population changes in butterflies over time. And we can then use it to track the, the local picture as well as the national and regional picture of butterfly trends in abundance. This data is mostly collected by volunteers who contribute about 80,000 days worth of effort every year. 
So at its heart, the UK BMS is a weekly butterfly count along a fixed route during suitable weather. It's usually about one to two kilometers long, taking about one hour to survey, but that can take slightly longer in the middle of summer when you're seeing more butterflies. There are all species transects and those run from the 1st of April to 30th of September every year. And there are single species transects, which only go during the flight period of target species, such as the small blue butterfly or the Northern Brown Argus. So yes, those are conducted beginning on the 1st of April every year. However, it doesn't have to be the same day of the week. Um, you don't have to survey on the same day of the week each time, and it's best to leave a gap of a few days between surveys if possible. Those are ideally conducted between 10.45 and quarter to four. Those are the most active periods for butterfly flight, and it should be done in bright, warm weather. So let's have a look at that. So that can be at least 17 degrees Celsius in any cloud cover. So even if it's completely cloudy, so long as it's 17 degrees, you can still record butterflies because the air temperature is warm enough for them to still fly. But if it's sunnier, you can actually record down to 13 degrees Celsius. So that, so that should be with at least 60% sun in the sky. And it should be dry. So if it has been raining, then I would usually give it at least an hour before recording, recording butterflies because the rain can uh, depress their flight and it can take them a while to warm up again and to begin to fly again. So here's just an example then. So example one, it could be the middle of summer. You look outside and it's completely cloudy, but you check the temperature and it's 18 degrees. And in that case, you're OK to record butterflies. Another example then might be in early April when it's still quite cold, it might only be 14 degrees outside, but it's completely sunny. And in that situation, you're also able to record as well. Now, just a word on sun. So sun is classified as bright cloud as well. So if you look outside and you can see that it's cloudy, but if you go outside and you can still see your shadow clearly on the ground, then that is actually classified as sun. It just means that there's enough of the sun's radiation getting to the earth to allow butterflies to fly. So just keep that in mind that sun is actually also classified as bright cloud. And then a transect, for each transect, you'll be given a clear map with directions on it. This will have clear start and finish points with a number of sections, as you can see in the illustration here on this map. You can see section one, two, three, and so on. Those sections are usually dependent upon the habitats which are found in them, but I also find it useful to have sections which are dependent on clear way markers, such as paths or signs, which will be there permanently. Now, this is for transects which already exist. However, we can also help you to set up your own transect. And if you'd like to set up your own, we can work with you to map that and to get it on the website. And you can create your own new transects. So keep that in mind. And then within a transect, we record the butterflies for each section as follows. So beginning with the transect, you have to include the environmental data. This is extremely important that this is recorded. So you can actually record it on a form which we'll send you or you can use a notebook of your own choice, but it's just important that you do record this data. So step one is the environmental data. The date is the most important of these because the date really um, affects the, the analysis a lot. So the date is essential. You don't really need to record the week number because that will be worked out on the website, but you do need to record the start time when you be begin and also the finish time when you finish recording. Those are very important too. Then just looking at the, the lower part of that form, the average temperature should be recorded. Ideally, this would be done with a thermometer if you have one, but if you don't, you can use other sources such as a weather app um, or um, the weather forecast for the day, but just be aware that those will be less accurate than a thermometer would be. Then you also should record the average wind speed. This is because whenever butterflies are flying, if it's very windy, they're less likely to fly. So this is recorded on a scale from zero to six called the Beaufort scale. And you can see that just listed here goes from zero, which is where smoke rises vertically, all the way up to six where large branches move and trees sway. So it's really, again, just a way for you to tell us how windy it was. And if it was very windy, then the analysis of that, uh, the, then the data analysis might exclude the data for that day because it was simply too windy for butterflies to fly. Then you also should record the wind direction, which is the wind direction that the wind is coming from. 
So all of this information is required, but please don't get too caught up in it. So it just really helps our scientists to exclude counts which have been conducted in poor weather that has resulted in low butterfly numbers. But if you're out by a degree or two or your Beaufort scale isn't exactly correct, it doesn't matter too much. It's just a really rough way for us to see whether the weather conditions were correct. So when you're recording, you always follow exactly the same route and you're moving at a slow and steady pace. I tend to think this think of this as being a normal slow walking pace and then you're recording all the butterflies you see in an imaginary five meter box to the front and to the side of you that means two and a half meters to your left two and a half meters to your right and five meters in front so you can see that illustrated in the diagram here and the reason we ask people to do this is because this is actually a, a scientific survey so it means that the data that you collect can be compared with data which is collected by people in other parts of the country so it just gives it some scientific rigor however sometimes it can be difficult to know whether a, a butterfly is just outside of your recording box and in those cases you just have to use your own judgment whether the butterfly was in or out and the odd butterfly won't make too much of a difference to the data And then here's an example of how you would complete the recording form. I tend to use a tally because then you can add new individuals to it as you go along. So here in section one, you can see I've completed it here. There are four small whites, two green faint whites and one orange tip in section one. And you can see how I've completed the tally here. So after that, then section two had four green faint whites. Section three had nothing in it. So normally I would put a line through that so that I don't end up recording in that same section again. And then section four had four orange tips and you complete it as you go along and completing all the sections. Different transects have different numbers of sections. So just be aware of that. Some of them have down to three or four sections and some of them have up to 15. So it's important that you complete the data for each section. For each one, you'll also be recording the percentage of sun that you see during that section. So here's how we record the percentage of sunshine. This isn't as tricky as it sounds. So really put simply, it's the proportion of time when there was either sun shining on you or bright cloud during that section. So again, bright cloud is defined as being cloud, which is bright enough so that you can still see a sharp shadow on the ground while you were walking that section only. So the percentage of sunshine is recorded for each section and it's important that you remember to do that. For example, if it takes you 10 minutes to walk a section and it was sunny for six minutes, then that's 60%. And a rough estimate going around uh, 10, 20, 30%, for example, is sufficient for this. This is then just an example of how a form is completed. And you'll see at the very bottom, you'll see that the percentage of sunshine is there, but you'll also notice a section for notes. And if you realize that you're running out of space within the little boxes for recording, you can include notes at the bottom. So you can write what section you were on and what species you were seeing and write your numbers there instead of trying to fit them into the little box at, at, on the upper part of the survey form. And I just have a couple of case studies now to show you how this might work. So for example, uh, last year, some volunteers attended uh, an online training workshop and then got in touch with us afterwards to find out if there were any transects near Delgetty Bay in Fife that needed new surveyors. So I had a look on our map and I found a transect at Kalalo Nature Reserve that hadn't been surveyed since 2014. So I gave the volunteers all the information they needed. I gave them the maps and the routes for this transect and they met on the 24th of June and they made a rota for walking this transect. The transect was then walked every week until the end of September that year and they found small pearl border fritillaries, which is one of our priority species for, um, for recording in Scotland. So they found that. They also found very high numbers of ringlet butterflies, peacocks and much more, including um, commas, dark green fritillaries and small coppers. So it was a really successful transect and hopefully those volunteers will keep walking that transect in years ahead. Then another case study is from Karen Woodlands in Aberlara in Murrayshire. And this was walked by Rosemary and Bill. So again, they had attended an online butterfly ID workshop in 2020. They then went out to explore their local area and they found a foresting plantation where there was no existing transect. So I helped them to set up their own transect and we mapped that on the UK BMS website. They started surveying and in their first week, they found small pearl border fritillaries as well as dingy skippers, which are, which are an extremely rare butterfly and it's a priority for monitoring work for us in Scotland. 
So eventually they found 14 species recording over a thousand butterflies in their first year, which is excellent for a, a transect which only ran for half of the year. And they're going to look out for pearl border fritillaries this year. So hopefully they will find some of those. So what next? Then you can actually either set up your own transect and we can help you with that or you can take part in existing ones. So on the UK BMS website, you can actually look for existing transects. You can see when they were last walked and if they need some new surveyors. So we can show you how to access that. You can let me know via email if you're interested and we can take it from there. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation. Hopefully you will begin to record or monitor butterflies and just get in touch with us if you're interested in taking that on.